time at the Quick Speed Shop. I'm back working on my buggy van, and I got one word for you. Shagtastic. Ooh. If you want to see some shag carpet installed in a van, this video is for you. Well, hey guys, it's another exciting day here at the Quick Speed Shop. I'm Josh, and today it's boogie van action day. Let's go check out the boogie van. It's out baking in the sun in the driveway. So here it is. My 88 Ford Econoline boogie van, custom pinstriped. We're going to be doing some things. I'm getting this van ready to go to the Hot Rod Power Tour in a couple of weeks. And I've got some things that I want to do. Uh, one of the things we're going to do today, we're going to swap grills. I've got a new old stock grill over here. This grill I got came out of the junkyard. As you can see, it's got a couple of cracks. It's got some house paint on it because the guy had painted the whole van it was his van with house paint. We're going to swap that out. Now, some of this is broke. Uh, these lower tabs always break on these. Can't see because the bumper is glaring right in my face. There's screws under the headlights. They go through the grill. This grill is all broken off, but the new one, because this new old stock is not. So these screws also hold the valance panel. That one's missing. And I uh, usually these grills are held in with some kind of plastic uh, like push pin action and I used, I put some nut certs in here and used quarter 20 stainless steel bolts. So that's how mine's held in. Your mileage may vary. And I got some quarter 20s down here as well. Whoops, when I lock nuts, I just lost that. Oh, there it is. There's a washer, there's the nut, perfect. The oak trees decided to drop all their helicopters like all over the place, so I got garbage everywhere. I can't even see what's on the ground right now. The plastic buttons of our factory are a real pain, and I think some were broke and stuff, so I put the nut certs in here, and it's working out awesome. Never seen so many fasteners to hold a grill in in my life. I guess it is pretty big. And that guy comes right out of there like that. So you can see it was cracked here, broken off tabs, faded. Uh, actually, the whole bottom is all cracked. But this is one of the best ones I got. That's why it was in the van in the first place. But we can't be styling at the Hot Rod Power Tour with a smashed up old junk grill. Now, if you haven't seen the videos and I built this van, you want to go back. There's a whole boogie van build uh, playlist. But this used to be a rectangular headlight van. It's an 88, so it had rectangular headlights with no marker lights down here. I bought one of these panels. Actually, I bought like three of them because they're super cheap on the internet. And painted it up and bolted on here. I cut the round the headlights out, grafted in around headlights out of a 70s van. The whole uh, panel here, I drilled out the spotlights and swapped the whole panel in, and then I got the early grill. So that's all you really gotta do to convert these 80 or 79 and up vans to, or 78 and up vans to round headlights is get a core support. They're all welded in, so you gotta cut them out, drill out the spot welds, change over the front panels here, get one of these earlier valances they use uh, 73 to 77 uh, F-series marker lights in them, and then you can just kirk, switch it right over to round headlights. This is a little dusty. It's got some scratches from shelf wear, but it's a hundred times better than the, the grill I just took out. No cracks, no breaks. Uh, real nice paint, should clean up good. So I'm just going to finger tighten all these down and line it up and put all the screws back in it. Man, these are a little tight. But probably don't need to watch that. I'm just going to put them all back in, but this will clean up. There's just like spider crap on there, but this, this grill is perfectly mint. It'll bolt right back in here, and it should clean up really nice. Like I said, this is... This has got to be new old stock. I don't see any evidence of ever being screwed in anything. And I want to say I got it at Carlisle for 
like 65 bucks or something like that, which was really good. I've been working on the interior. My main goal is to get the shag interior in this thing before the power tour. I was supposed to have the rear windows vinyl wrapped with my logo, but that kind of half fell through. They were supposed to do it yesterday and they boned me at the vinyl place, so I gotta go back next week. But I've been working on insulating this. I got this stuff off of Amazon. Celeste, it's like uh, it's like their other one, Kill Mat, but it's just another brand that Amazon has. I got about 50, 60 square feet in here so far, and it really makes the metal sound solid. Well, hey there, here we are. We're ready to party. We're ready to get serious. So uh, if you go back and watch the playlist to this van when I built it, this used to be a handicap van that had a wheelchair lift and a whole nine yards in it from like 1988. Ripped all that stuff out, made it a 70s boogie van. And one of the things I found was this mint triple green interior on Craigslist for free, if you can believe that. It was out of a Ford 76 Ford Chateau van, and it was four buckets with swivels, and then the bed slash benches in the back here. Now, originally, the benches faced each other here, and I was thinking about doing the same thing, but it leaves me a little, tiny little bit of storage in between, and I really like to use this van to haul things uh, undercover, like it'll haul 12-foot lumber with the doors closed, and if I want to go to Hershey or a swap meet, it's nice to be able to put some things in the back undercover and vend out of the van. So I want to have a buggy van with nice shag, but I also want to haul rusty junk. So I'm in a quandary, that's the word of the day, quandary, of what to do. But I think it came up with a plan. So as you can see, I've got the benches side by side here. Check out this action. So these slide out into a bed and they would originally face each other. Whoops, but they weren't quite wide enough to span the action of the van. But if I put them like this, I flop them down, boom. This one's, come on, old man, a little stiffer. Boom, like that. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Now I've got a bed uh, it wasn't quite wide enough it was less than six foot so I had to like prop my head up against the window which these are gonna be paneled over but now if I do it this way I've got tons of space to sleep in here this is sturdy this is oak that they make the sliders out of so it's sturdy but there's plenty of room to hang out in here and sleep like this but when you want to party you convert to party mode Boom, like that. Now you can have like six or seven people in here, kind of like a limousine. I'm gonna have a shelf over here, I think. I have two tables. I got a small table that goes up here and I have a oval table that I could mount back here if I want, but I think I'll just stick with a fold down shelf over there. But you could have party, plenty of party hanging out. You can access through here and through the back doors. So what I think I wanna do now in this video is we'll, we'll start getting like this thing roughly build into place. I have some whole bunch of half inch plywood, CDX plywood. I just sawed out some four inch strips. We're gonna go and strip down the side of the van uh, where the metal is, screw it in the metal. So I got some wooden furring strips to then screw the plywood sides in. And I have some carpet glue and some other things. So we're gonna work in the back. We're gonna work forward. I think what we're gonna start is we'll put all the strips on, take these out, strip up this side. I like to get this paneled both sides and then build the bench frame. What I think I'm gonna do is, uh, this is all hollow under here and it's wasted space. I'm gonna saw it off right up under the sliders all the way around and these will sit on a new plywood platform that's gonna have some feet down here but it'll allow me to have storage underneath it. Okay, it's the next day. It's actually middle of the next day. I've been laboring for hours. I saved you guys the tediousness, is that a word? I guess, tediousness of this. But let me show you what's happening. So I took my half-inch plywood, and I cut it into the four-inch strips, like I said I was going to do, and I've gone and stripped the inside of the van with the four-inch strips here, using my tech screws into the metal. I've got some spacer pieces made where I'm going to blank over the rear windows here. This is just kind of did it how I did the driver's side. There's no panel under the window because if this is a blank side van, this 
strut piece just would have gone all the way up. You can see where it would have attached here, but there is no provision for under the window mount on this side. Like, like on this side, there is metal under here, wraps around because part of the door structure. So uh, anyways, I got the wood screwed on there. This side's gonna be a little bit different how it's gonna lay out, but this side is ready to go. I've also run some wires. I've got 14 gauge speaker wire, and I'm gonna put a speaker right about here. So I've run a wire for this, and up overhead, I'm gonna have a uh, like a command center. I think I'm gonna put a CB radio. I'm gonna have like a modern radio. I think I'm gonna have a speaker over each head because I don't want speakers in the doors. They get all kicked up and smashed and the wires get broken, the hinges constantly opening and closing. So I think I'm gonna put a speaker over my head on each side in the command center. So I've just run all the wires up, got them dangling here, labeled them up. I also ran a wire light back there all the way to the back for a, uh, I can have a switch to light on my console that'll be up here. Or I can do like LED rope lights around the interior or something like that. So I ran that down along on the inside. I've just been using the, the kill mat type stuff to stick the wire up to the metal. It works really good. And I protected all the edges with that over there where it goes through the wall right there into the ceiling. But I'm all stripped out here. I've got the first panel made for the carpet. Uh, this is going to go right behind the driver's side seat. Here's my speaker hole. Don't mind my butchered hole I made. My my saber saw has no blades for it for some reason. So I had to like cut out a hole saws in the, in the uh, Sawzall. Kind of butchered it in there, but it works. Here are the speakers I got. Just some uh, Kenwood 5-inch speakers with a tweeter in the center. They're, you know, Kenwoods used to be good. These are all made in China now. They're like... I think I bought them on Amazon. I bought four of them. So I'm going to do two in the driver's side behind the seats and then the two overhead. So there'll be four speakers in the van. I'm not a big sound system guy. I don't want like amps and all that nonsense in here. I just want enough. You'll play the radio. Um, you could put woofers in the whole nine yards in here and get out of control. They have amps and stuff, but not a stereo guy. But the, there'll be two speakers on this side, uh, left and right rear channels are going to be on this side and then the left and right front channels will be up over my head. It'll be plenty. It'll be behind a seat so it'll be protected and it'll sound good and, and all that. So I'm going to get our tunes on. We'll have them. So uh, you can see the triple green on here real nice. My carpet I got is about this color green here. So we're going to go bust that out right now. Okay, I got the carpet. Are you ready to check it out? Where did I buy this from? I bought it last year. I forget. Designed in USA. This is 20 feet of 30 inch wide, and I got some more. It's like a runner. Unique loom. Ready? Anyways, here we go. You ready to see the color? Oh my goodness gracious. And then, oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. That's some shag action right there, I'll tell you what. Going to need to get a shag rake, get my rake on, get my shag out. Look at that. Boom. So luckily, just by happenstance, the panels that go in the side of the van are 27 inches tall. And this is 30. So I'm going to have enough to wrap around without trimming it. Where's that? Got plastic. Let's roll this out. It's my carpet table, I guess. How is this looking? I guess I knew what I need to do is cut this where it's got to be. Where's the other side of the panel? You know what? Would it make sense? Let's roll this back up and unroll it upside down. I'm going to leave that. It needs to be just a little bit longer there. Actually, it's probably not going to flip over on the bottom just the way it is. I need some to wrap there. Okay, and staple. So I need to cut it here. I need some kind of straight edge. Aha! I don't know what the best way to cut this is. I got scissors, I might be able to cut it with that. 
Like I said, never done this before. Did look in a van book. Let's see what they suggested. I mean, back then they had all kinds of carpet available. That looks like a good... It's like a good spot, right like that. Boom. Now let's see if this pair of scissors will cut this. She's definitely uh, shaggy. Try a razor blade. I know they make carpet choppers, but don't have one of those available either. This is some shaggy action. I know I got shag everywhere. This is like a runner, that's why it's sewed up nice on the end. And this is apparently green yarn. Oh boy, this is gonna be a mess. Oh boy. It's a mess. So, got that like that. What I think. That'll work out. And the best way to do this is not re research it at all, is just do it. So I've got carpet adhesive, which is great. And you just kind of put it on, and there's a trowel that goes along with it. And I have the trowel right here. It says you use the 16th side, which is there. Oh, look at that. Nice. Okay. We can, we can dig it. Just kind of trowel around there, I guess. I'm not sure how much, but it's the worst that could happen. Carpet adhesive. Like I said, I didn't research this at all. Didn't research it at all. Just doing it. Just doing it. That's why, uh, that's why I'm using the uh, staples as well, because I don't know how well this is going to hold in a vehicle interior application, but this is... I assume people want their carpet glued down and not have it come loose, so. I guess it's gonna work out all right. I'll just take it and flip it. See, let me think about this. I want the cut piece to go over there. I'm gonna flip it like this. I guess it really doesn't matter because it's gonna get wrapped both ways, but think about this. That's the top. 
Yeah, let's do it like this. About like that. About like that. Now, there's a staple gun over there. Staple. Nice. So just like the 70s all over again. Look at that. And I'm gonna stretch it. And staple it. And staple it. And staple it. This is the top. This is what I gotta leave free to go on my window. This is the bottom. Which will hold free. Let's see if we can flip it. And I guess just Get down to the weave, staple it. It's the nice thing about shag, all your staples will disappear. This is gonna be awesome. All right guys, I'm not gonna lie. I just legitimately spent like 20 minutes in agonizing pain. I blew my knee out Somehow I was kneeled in the van and I got up and it twisted and it popped and like folded a tendon under my kneecap or something. It was all I do, could do to get out of the van. I didn't have the camera on. I had just put the panel in, had one screw in. I spent the last 20 minutes trying to fix my knee. I actually, what fixed it was like crawling on my hands and knees and it unmessed the mess was gonna, that happened. I, I've been having popping in the knee once in a while, but it got all upside down, all wadded up in there. It was bad. So I think I fixed it, it's all right. So let's take a look at the panel, I got it in. How awesome does that look? I was a little shy in the carpet rolling over for the windows, but I was able to staple it up around the top of the card, the plywood, and I think it'll hold. I've got to trim it around my hold downs for my windows. I just barely clear, but the panel, I can't bend my knee, I don't want to bend my knee, but the panel is super trick. That is thick shag action. It matches like the green in the center of the chairs. This is gonna be awesome. Even more awesome than I thought it was. So now I'm gonna make the, the panel for here, for this side, and get all my lower panels on. And then I'm gonna make the upper panel for the window here and put that on. But I got a process. I looked up the carpet adhesive. You're supposed to spread it on, let it set for a few minutes. Then it's like tacky. Then you just slam the carpet on it. Uh, when I was stapling the top, it seemed like it was sealing up good. So it should be glued on there and it's stapled on. So everything should be a-okay. But that is some shag in action if I ever saw it. And then I'll have my speaker hole there. I cut that in. But you can't get much more green shag than this green shag. Holy moly. All right, bam, this next day, not going to lie, my knee is still super sore and screwed up. But I got to be real careful about bending. And uh, whatever, it's not ideal, but we're making it work. Oh, bam, second piece of shag installed. Got the rear piece on. And man, I'll tell you what, the shag carpet, cause it's so shaggy, it's more shaggy than Scooby-Doo. It is awesome because you can't even see the seam between the two panels. So I kind of, I pointed out, if I rake the shag a little bit, you can't even see the, the seam, it's gonna be awesome. So what I'm gonna do now is work on making the big panel here, and then we'll make the panel for over here, or maybe all the panels, make all the, I think in this video, because it's probably getting out of hand or long, plus injuries, we're gonna do all the side panels in here, and the next time we'll start building the bench, put a, like a ceiling in here. I think I got some masonite I'm gonna use with some carpeted strips in between, something or another. Not sure yet, but let's get all the, uh, the side panels fabbed up in the rest of the end of the video here. So uh, I'm gonna cut out a big piece of plywood for that. I'm gonna gingerly get in here with my knees and uh, measure. Well, it's been all day. I burned through just about all my carpet. 
this is the only big piece I got left. I got little bits and pieces, but let's check it out. It's shagtastic. Uh, like I showed you earlier, I had this side done. I kicked out this side. Same process. I made a, a panel here. Where I can't even find the seam. There it is in there. Lower panel and upper panel. Now I'm going to take some of my scraps of carpet. And since this is, I'm going to zip screw carpet to here. And I'm going to sheet metal screw it to here and close these gaps up. This is kind of be just carpet bridging this here. I mean, there's not really a reason to back up wood, I guess. But it'll, it'll close this, this back area up. I went and I put a panel on the door. This I didn't back with plywood because when the door is open, it kind of like goes in this pocket area. So I took the carpet and I used the, the loop edge on the edge of the carpet to form like a door panel on both sides. And uh, I got it sheet metal screwed to the door. There's a centerpiece. It's a little, uh, there's no, it's got some gap behind it, but it should be all right. That's the best I can do with that. Um, I still needed room for the latches here and all that, but it opens and works. Boom, and I got the edge along here, so got panel on there. Now this isn't perfect. I got a little bit of plywood showing here. I tried to roll the edge the best I could. I'm going to paint that black with a Sharpie or something, or green, so that kind of disappears. But I'm not the best at interior work. First time doing shag in a van. I left this long. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the ceiling yet. I'm just a hair shy here. My, my ceiling board might come over and cover this. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with that. Yet. I think I'm going to put some masonite on it with some carpet strips along the metal strips on the top. Um, the last couple things I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of plywood to go from here down to the rubber on this window and over past the, uh, the seat belt there. Actually, that, that's got a gap. That should be able to fit plywood right over there. Then I want to uh, make a piece for this here. Just kind of get it all up to the front seats, uh, both sides. I'll probably have to get some more of this carpet. I think it's grass green. I got I to gotta look at the receipt. I got it from, I think, rugs.com on the interwebs. But I rolled this around. This rolled around nice here. I'll have to put one more screw in that. But this rolled around. There's a couple of pieces of plywood here. So this rolled around, kind of made it right to the rubber. So it, it's the best I can do. It's probably as good as most 70s shag wagons were when the kids were high, smoking the smoking the dope back in the day, put them together. And uh, it's nice and solid. It's going to work out good. You can see there where I need to box that, those corners in like I talked about. But it's going to be awesome, I think. And it pretty much matches this light green stripe in the seats here. And uh, green is green. Next time we'll take the, the seats here and get the back seats installed. I uh, was going to trim these all down, but I think I can trim around the back sides and redo how they mount on the uh, over the wheel tubs and attach them together and then still use this factory uh, plywood base on them. I think I got that figured out. I also need to get some sticky uh, floor. I got some closed cell foam padding to put on the floor. I'm going to put that down first and we'll build out the side with the benches, put the speakers in. Um, I do want to do some kind of probably real tight uh, plywood cover for that, put some carpet on that. I want to get a shelf to mount on here that will probably be hinged and swing up with a foot that will sit on there so I can have a shelf out here when they're entertaining. I have some room to put some things and uh, yeah. I'm actually pretty happy the way it came out. I was super nervous. Uh, I spent like $300 on carpet, believe it or not. The shag carpet is not cheap. And I was super nervous that it wasn't going to work out and look like garbage. And it actually came out pretty decent from never ever doing this before, never putting an interior in a van or anything. And uh, the plywood fits pretty decent. The carpet fits good. The carpet glue worked out good. The staples, the whole nine yards. So I'm pretty happy with the way my uh, cheap interior is coming out in my van. Appreciate everybody for watching. Appreciate everybody watching. Hopefully I'll come back and we'll put some more, put the seats and all that and stuff, and I'll get this thing ready to go to the power tour. I've got like two and a half weeks, and i got to be on the road. So I'm going to keep working on the van, but I appreciate everybody watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out a lot. You don't got to even watch the videos, but subscribers helps out, and if you just want to put them in the background or watch it, you might learn something. 
appreciate it. And thanks for all the uh, fans out there with the, with the comments. And we'll see you again next time. Man, that's nice. Shagging it out here. Bam. Here at the Quick Speed Shop.